Hello world, and we are back. My name is Kyle Fischl, and this is going to be episode 141 of my poker vlog. For this video, pretty much every decision I get into is actually really difficult and really close. I know you're going to love it, and we're going to go right into some hands. So we begin this day at the 1-2 table. As we get there early in the morning, is the biggest game running. And one hand of note is with four limps to me. I'm on the button. I look down at pocket aces. Even at the 1-2 table, this is still the best hand possible so far. So I raised to $12. Three of the limpers decided to call, so we're going four ways to a flop of eight, seven, five, two diamonds. Not a particularly good board for me, not one I particularly like, but either way, I'm still just going to bet this one, hopefully thin the field and apply a lot of pressure on pretty safe turn cards. So when it checks to me, I bet $15, and single pairs like eight, nine, five, six, and diamond draws can pay off this bet and put a lot of pressure on them on safe turn cards. Well, the turn is the four of clubs. Very much not what I'm looking for. No pressure will be added by me. This one will be a check back when checked to me. But I don't get the opportunity as a middle position player leads for $35. Yeah, four liner on board. We're at one, two. Uh, we're just going to agree that he has it and move on. But we graduate to the one, three table. Only lost $9 at the one, two table. So guess we'll take it before the first hand of note here. With a button straddle, there's one limp. I raised to $15 in later position with pocket sevens. The button, the big blind, and the limper call. So we're going four ways to a flop. No set on this one, but we do get 10, 6, 4, 2 diamonds. Only one overcard feels pretty good with sevens. Usually you get a lot worse boards than this. Strangely enough, the limp caller decides to lead for $20. And in general, I think these smallish leads are always trying to like name their price with flush draws, maybe some overs. They're never really nutted or super strong because most of those hands will just check call or check raise. So I'm going to pounce on this. I think a raise here can get some of the flush draws to just fold and we can win right now. I don't really think a 10 plays this way all too often. So we're going to raise, hopefully take it down now. Otherwise, we establish the betting lead and get to play the rest of the hand in position. I raised to $70. My opponent doesn't take too long before calling, so that's fine. Hoping for a safe turn card. 10 of clubs is pretty good, all things considered. What's not good is my opponent lead jams for about $115. Well, this is gross. Definitely a tough decision. My opponent led flop and called a raise and then just led jammed turn. Really not a line you see all too often, if ever. I think about this for a decent amount of time. At the end of the day, I don't think a 10 really plays this way. I think a 10 can happily get all the money in on the river if he wants to. Not having the 7 of diamonds means that I unblock like 7-6 of diamonds, 7-5 of diamonds, 7-8. All hands like this might play this way, so I'm ahead of a lot of draws. I don't see a 10 playing this way. I guess this one's just going to be a call. I eventually put all the money in there, and we're off to a river card. River is the 3 of clubs, somewhat safe. My opponent initially flips a 3. I'm disgusted, thinking he has like 3-4. But the other card is a 5, so he was just going with an open-ended and only gets fourth pair sevens are good and now the stack's looking pretty good in the game for five hundred dollars definitely have some profit after this one before the next interesting hand with one limp i raised to twenty dollars in late position button and the limper calls there were three ways to a flop of nine seven five two diamonds i actually think it's a really good board for my exact hand the double gut shot is super disguised. If it ever connects, like it's your opponent's really not going to see it coming. There's a lot of money to be made with this hand. So when it checks to me, I'm definitely going to start out this with a bet, like to build a pot in case my draw hits. So I start out with $20. The button calls and the other player folds. So we're actually going heads up to a turn card, which is the king of spades. Also, I think it's a very good card to continue on. I play my ace kings this way, king x of diamonds, king queen at some frequency, just C betting because I have two overs and some backdoor straight draws. So I'm definitely going to continue when this card hits. I bet $60, put a lot of pressure on diamond draws, 9x. All those hands are going to be in a tough spot, and this time it works out. My opponent folds, and we take down a pot with jack high. Following with that, with two limps, I raise to $15 with ace 10 off suit. The button and the both limpers call as well. So we're going four ways to a flop of ace 3 4 rainbow. Feels great to flop top pair, good kicker. Feel like I can bet small here. I bet small here with all my hands. Ace-king, ace-queen, all the way to ace-ten. 
Maybe pocket kings, pocket queens, pocket jacks don't want to give up too often on ace high boards. They'd bet small as well. So ace 10 is going to be in there. I make it $20. The button raises to 50, which is not quite ideal. Probably going to just call this until an early player decides to call the raise. Now against two people on an extremely dry board, I mean, the limp callers could have th set of threes, set of fours, ace three, ace four pretty easily, I'd say. I'm not too worried about the button, but I really just think the earlier position player has ace three exactly, partially because when he saw the flop, he immediately looked at his chips, looked really excited. So somewhat of a live read, hard to describe on a vlog format, but I just expect the opponent to my direct right to have a much stronger hand, so I think I'm just going to let this one go. Kind of weak, honestly, but fast forward a little bit. Turn is a four. I feel gross. I feel like I just sucked out against ace three. But either way, both opponents get all the money in, and it turns out that was not the case. Player to my direct right had ace four and actually had me pretty thin, turned dead. So, you know, dodging landmines like this is how you're going to make money in poker. Like, I should probably lose more money on this one, but kind of an exploitative live read leads me to fold and save some money. All right, finally at the big show. 2-5 is the game. I'm in the game for 700 now. Hope to run good as the stakes are definitely bigger. I'm one of the gun with pocket fives. I just decided to limp this one. I think you can go all three ways. You can raise, you can limp and try to set mine. You could just fold because you're under the gun. I choose to limp. Don't really want to just fold that often. Two other limps occur before the button raises to 40. So he definitely sees the dead money out there, but I'd not limp pocket fives just to give up. I'll make the call. And one of the other limpers decides to call. So we're going three ways to a flop of 10, nine, five, bink, two diamonds. Definitely going to check raise this one. Bottom set on this board, draw heavy, feels great. Expect my opponent to continue with like ace, king, ace, queen with one or multiple diamonds in their hands. All over pairs, I'm probably going to stack, but... Unfortunately, I mean, when we check to the button, he checks it back. Not my favorite outcome. Turn, also not my favorite. Eight of clubs. Board's getting straighter. Not enjoying this, but I think I have to throw out a bet here. About half pot, try to build it. Go for some big value on the river, giving some safe river cards. The cutoff, who was a limp caller, decides to call, and the button folds. So we're going heads up to river card. Let it be safe, dealer. Probably the worst card in the deck with the Jack of Diamonds peels off. <laughs> ha! You're crying! Four liner on board, three diamonds. I have bottom set. What a gross run out. I check, hoping my opponent will just check back some two. Maybe the dummy end of the straight just checks this back and takes their showdown value. Doesn't want to face a difficult decision when diamonds complete. But this opponent does not make it easy for me. He bets $100. Uh, such a value-heavy sizing, too. Sitting with bottom set, lose to everything. Single seven, single queen. Diamond's most obvious draw on the flop completes. Such a tough one. Think we have to stay disciplined here and just let it go and just assume he has some of the hands that are beating us, which is quite a bit. Not my favorite hand, but... Pocket queens should be able to turn this one around. With two limps, I raise up to $30. Well, the big blind and both limpers call. So we're going four ways to a flop of jack, seven, five, two hearts. Feels great to keep your over pair with queens. Not a very dangerous board at all. We have the queen of hearts, which is blocks some of the flush draws. So we're going to go for some value here. We want to size up, make the flush draws pay to be able to continue. We bet $85. Closer to three quarters pot. Only the under the gun limp caller decides to continue. So we are going heads up to a turn card, which is the king of spades. Not my favorite for obvious reasons. Over card to the queens, but when you scrutinize this card a little bit more, my opponent really shouldn't have too many kings in range. He limp called pre and then called a flop bet on a jack high two heart board. I think I'm pretty safe to be able to continue betting here and then shut down a lot of unsafe rivers. I think I can get value from like queen jack, maybe jack 10, heart draws, sometimes pocket eights, pocket tens. So I bet $165. And for the theme of the video, my opponent does not make it easy for me when he pretty quickly jams all in. So now I'll go over why I don't think he could have a king. As a limp caller, he never really has ace king. King queen of hearts is probably the only relevant flush draw that can continue that contains a, a king. 
but I have the Queen of Hearts, so that's not really possible. I think King Jack suited or otherwise is likely going to be a raise from this opponent. So pretty much the only hand that I think can actually play this way is exactly King 10 of Hearts. Pretty much the only one that I'm kind of worried about on the connecting to the King front. For two pairs, I mean Jack 7 is possible but kind of unlikely. I don't expect my opponent to be playing this wide. Same thing as 7-5. I don't think he's playing this wide. This really feels like a... A spade picked up equity and is going with it I think the most likely hand that would play this way is like jack ten of spades jack nine of spades maybe jack queen of spades as we don't block that one and we're still beating that hand so after a long tank I just eventually put my opponent on pair plus flush draw and decide that I have to just go with this hand Wow I can't find a flaw in his logic only about $300 behind in my stack so I put it all in the river card, I very much don't like with the king of hearts. Like, hearts completed. He obviously could have any two hearts. That just goes with it. 8-9 of hearts. 9-10 of hearts. 5-6 of hearts. But my opponent says that he missed everything. So I just show. No need to make him show because if he says that he missed, I believe him. But eventually, he decides to show anyway for the vlog. Very nice guy. He had the 6-4 of spades. So open-ended plus flush draw, I dodged the entire world to double up. And after seeing this exact hand, kind of makes me not like my call all too much, because if he can have that, he can easily have 7-5, which is a hand I'm losing to a lot of the time. Maybe not with this exact run out, but either way, this one is going towards us. Happy to hold when all the chips are in the middle. And now the stack's looking great. And in the game for $700, got about $12.50 in front. That feels great. And we're going to build on it because very shortly after it, we look down at Pocket Kings. With one limp, a middle position player raised to $15. There's two callers. With all that money in there with Kings, I definitely don't want to see this multi-way. want to size up. I'm playing out of position. Need to build a pot now. I make it $95. Only the initial raiser decides to call. So we're going heads up with some dead money also in there. Flop is 10 8, 8 two diamonds. Pretty good board for me, all things considered. Really hope I priced out any random 8x hands with my 95 pre. We can get values from 10x, diamonds, maybe some queen jack, jack 9 type hands. So happy to bet this one small, reevaluate turn. I bet $75. When my opponent makes the call, hoping for a safe turn card. 9 of spades, not quite what I'm looking for. Queen jack is definitely within my opponent's range. That kind of gets there. As I think this board is better for a raise callers range than a 3 betters. You know, he's got pocket 10s, pocket 9s, pocket jacks, which may feel better about this board. I'm going to just turn my hand into a check call at this point. Out of position, like to pot control a little bit. When I check, my opponent bets $125. Not really going to fold with my hand. We're pot controlling so we don't get check raised, but we can happily check call with our hand. All right, dealer. Let's see an easy river card to give us an easy decision. Nine of hearts, kind of interesting. I expect this to slow up an 8 at some frequency. I expect a hand like Queen Jack to probably just take their showdown value if I check to them. And I think Diamond Draws really wouldn't bluff too often at this card as you're going to get called by some ace highs at least some of the time with this exact run out. So I check, actually expecting my opponent to check back a decent amount of the time, but he does not check. He goes all in for probably $800. Well, this is horrendous and disgusting and horrible and difficult would my opponent bluff the river with like ace jack of diamonds i mean maybe that hand specifically blocks the straight but in general ace highs are pretty good on double paired boards there's a lot of showdown value would he just rip a 10 like this probably not probably not jacks would he rip queen king of diamonds i mean if he does it's a pretty good bluff attempt but I think I have to just stay disciplined here in that big bets on the river, even all-ins. I don't think many opponents really have the ability to bluff all-in on the river. This particular opponent had shown the ability to bluff against other people throughout the day, so it's really making me go back and forth with this one. But finally, I just settle on the, I'm just going to assume he has it, and fold. Double-checking my kings, make sure I don't have a diamond, which I do not. I let it go. And my opponent throws me the nine of diamonds. Actually, I'm not even mad. That's amazing. <laughs> so he had 
I guess the nuts technically or very close to it. That one is very irritating. But that's fine. We're going to get to battle back. With one limp, the button raises to 15. There's one caller. I look down at ace, 10 of hearts on the big blind. We're going to three bet this one. So far, we've only really raised with kings and queens. So we got to balance it out with some ace, 10 suited and some lower hands as well. So I raised to $85. Only the initial limper calls. So that's weird. The 15 and the other player fold. So we're going heads up to a flop of nine deuce deuce rainbow with one heart at this point this is just gonna be power poker i'm just gonna bet i think my opponent has to miss this board most of the time if i had aces kings queens jacks play it the same way so we're just gonna go for a bet bet make him fold all of his middling garbage since we've seen this opponent will call 95 pre with some variation of 9x i started with an 80 dollar bet my opponent calls the turn is the queen of clubs. Doesn't help me at all. Doesn't give me my backdoor hearts or anything. But I'm going to keep betting. I bet $200. I would do this if I have ace queen, ace king, pocket aces, pocket kings, pocket queens. Apparently ace 10 suited. This card's much better for my range than my opponents. If he had a weird 10-9, pocket 10s, pocket jacks. This is going to be tough for him to hold on because... I'm probably just ripping it on the river, honestly. This this opponent's shown he has the ability to call $100 pre with just some nine, so we're going to have to put him to the test. The $200 bet gets thought about for a long time. Counted out, riffled, grabbed his cards, grabbed the 200, grabbed his cards again, grabbed the 200. I don't know which way he's going to go, but honestly, the longer he's thinking about it, the more I'm thinking that I just have to go for it on the river when he tanks this long. Makes him look weaker and weaker as time goes on. But he eventually lets his cards go. I am extremely happy to get this one through. This one, not recommended. Following that, with a $10 button straddled, the under the gun player raised to $30. I'm in later position with pocket jacks. feel like I've three bet a decent amount this session, and this raise came from the literal under the gun spot. So I think jacks is pretty good to just call this one. The button decides to call as well, so we're going three ways to a flop of queen queen five rainbow not a bad board the only over card is paired so it's pretty unlikely any of my opponents have it the preflop aggressor continues for twenty dollars pretty happy just call this one play in position see what develops the button folds heads up to a turn card six of clubs creates a backdoor club draw my opponent bets again this time 45 still not really gonna fold my opponent would do this with ace king ace jack maybe like 10 nine of clubs where he just see bets picks up some clubs things such as that so and like i've said i've seen this opponent bluff throughout the session so we're definitely going to call this one river is the three of hearts and my opponent bets 75 dollars well my opponent has shown the ability to bluff previously in the session we've got a pretty strong hand sometimes just gotta keep them honest this time it does not work out for me when i call my opponent has queen jack off suit Initially, I was mad that I didn't 3-bet pre, but I think my opponent would just call the 3-bet, and then i just lose more money. So, still a loss, but we will take it. For the final hand of note, a middle position player raises to $20. There's one call. I look down at ace-king off suit. Definitely going to be my 3-betting range. So, I raise it up to $90, and this apparently is too much, as both players fold. So we take a small one down at the end of the night. So as seen, we gave a little bit back after our hero call with the queens. We're in the game for $700, out of the game for $985, which is a profit of $285 across five hours equates to $57 an hour or 11 big blinds an hour. Yeah, definitely pretty fun when the game is quite difficult and you still somehow manage to get a profit. Definitely think I had some pretty bad runouts multiple four liners when i have pairs and not really what you're looking for but either way happy to book a win here if you have made it all the way to this point in the video i appreciate it please do me a favor like the video it helps me out and i will see you all on the next one